It's Thursday, it's April 28th, 2011, and today we're going to be taking a look at the final release of Ubuntu 11.04 Netty Narwhal. <laughs> If you've been watching my videos for the last few months, you've probably seen quite a bit of this already. I'll go ahead and have links to all of the videos I've done on 11.04 through the alphas and the betas. But let's go ahead and just take a look at what's new with 11.04 very quickly. And then if you want to see some more info on it, you can always go back and watch those other videos. Now the biggest change with 11.04 is that they've moved away from the classic GNOME interface where you had the panel on top and the panel on bottom and you could customize everything pretty easily and they've created this new shell on top of it which they're calling Unity. Unity was available in Ubuntu 10.10 .10 in the netbook edition. It was very very early and it was kind of slow. This one has significantly grown up, changed, and in my opinion improved in quite a few ways. If you're looking at this, in the upper left hand corner we have a button that brings up what's called the dash. The dash by default is a big black box that you can make even bigger if you're on a certain screen resolution by clicking this little box right here to fill the screen. Now that dash uses what's called a lens. It sits on top of it, it just shows a certain amount of information. By default, while clicking the Ubuntu button you get different application categories you can go into and some common shortcuts that people would use. Not necessarily specific to you, but just some common ones. A different quote lens that you can use is the applications lens, which takes you into your installed applications, your most frequently used apps, and the apps you have available for download. You can from here go to your different categories. You can also get here, like I said before, by going to the Ubuntu button and selecting more apps, or by typing in the app you want to search for, there's a lot of ways to work between these different application-based lenses. At least, I, I hope I'm saying that correctly, I believe that is called a lens. Uh, there are other lenses that are going to be available. There are lenses for YouTube and for the Ubuntu One Music Store and a load of other various and sundry things, whatever you can imagine really. There's one for Gwibber even that's been designed that will allow you to interact with Twitter and I believe Facebook and other social networking type sites where basically you'd hit whatever the button is on the dash, on the, the launcher here. It would bring up the dash with whatever context you're using. For example, if I hit the YouTube one, if I had that installed, it would bring up the most popular videos, the most commented, the most favorited, whatever, uh, my subscriptions, all sorts of things of that nature, but all within your default Ubuntu interface. So it does have a lot of extensibility. Uh, I don't know exactly how much that's going to be used. I don't know how much it's been popularized to this point. I've seen a couple of articles on it. I've talked about it a little bit myself, but I haven't had the time or the reason really to uh, to spend a lot of time working with the lenses. I will probably do be doing a video talking about those in the very near future. But like I said, just to give you a quick example of how this will work, uh, if you wanted to look for more apps, you can click more apps. You can go to specific categories over here. Or if you want to, you can just start typing. Like, for example, if I wanted to search for the terminal, I could just type T, and then all of the applications that start with T come up. Here is the terminal, the very first one. I can click on that, or I can hit the tab key to go through all the different ones that have come up. But at the end of the day, if I want to, like I said, just click on it, it will open it up. There you go, you've got your application open. You can close it, you can move it around. You could take it to a different desktop by hitting the workspace switcher, and dragging it over to another one. You see it's very easy to move between them. And they even sort of overlap to the next. Uh, yeah, you'll, you see what I mean there. It's, uh, it's, it's different, it's new, it's interesting. I think it's new at least. Uh, the other thing that's kind of cool, you see this launcher here. It takes up the left side of the screen. As far as I know to this point, it cannot be moved. If you have the Compass Config Settings Manager, which does not come out of the box with Ubuntu, you can actually make this larger or smaller. You can do a couple of minor changes to it. You can change the way that it hides. By default, you see if I drag this over, it dodges out of the way and then comes back when the window moves away. That's uh, an admirable way to do things, I think. For example, if you open something that's full screen like Firefox, it should go out of the way entirely when you maximize it, just like that. And when you pull it back down, there we go, it pulls the, the bar back out. Uh, but basically the launcher itself, it's sort of like 
the Windows 7 launcher, and I really hate to compare it to that, but you've got your commonly used applications over here. You can add to this list, you can remove from this list. Actually, this is not the default list. I've been messing around with it a little bit. If I wanted to, for example, remove LibreOffice because I just don't use it, remove it from this quick list, I can just drag it down here to the trash can, and it goes away. Now, you can't drag straight down. You actually have to pull out and down before it will go out. But, you know, it does work. It does make it easier to add things to it. Uh, I've noticed a couple of things. For example, if I want to add something new, I just cl click and drag it out. There we go. Uh, if I open that item now, the problem that I've seen, and someone pointed this out to me earlier, if you click on that again, it doesn't minimize. The main way to minimize at this point, you can't even right click and do it. You have to hit the minimize button. Or you can use the, you should be able to use the keyboard shortcut. Nope, that didn't work. There we go. Alt space N will minimize it. So I don't know, it's taking a little bit away, a, a little bit from Windows, a little bit from Mac, sort of combining some ideas together and, and throwing in their own unique things, such as this dash, which I, I know a lot of people don't like it. I, I'm, I won't say I'm a fan of it, but I'm definitely not against the idea because it is something new and something different. That is basically the most of what there is to say about Unity. If you want to make changes to this panel, you really can't. If you right-click on it, most everywhere it doesn't do anything. Uh, you do have the global menu available by default, so if you have an application that you open like Firefox, you see by default you don't have a menu available here. But if you go up to the top, there's your menu with your bookmarks and your history and all of that. Uh, assuming the application you're running does integrate with it, it should work appropriately. I know just recently Chrome slash Chromium in their de dev channel did get the ability to integrate with that global menu, so it's nice to see some applications moving toward supporting this, but I, personally, I'm not, not a huge fan of it. Just my opinion, though. Uh, do feel free to try it out for yourself and see what you think of it. Now, as far as uh, the rest of the changes that come along with 11.04, we do have an updated kernel. If I come in here and just type in uname dash, dash a, there we go. It says 2.6.38 generic. I'm running on a 64-bit system, uh, but 2.6.38 is the newest, best and brightest kernel that's available. Uh, I don't know if that dash 8 is actually the newest, newest one. I think if I were to go ahead and update, I might get the 2.6.38.4. I... Uh, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong there. I think that's the latest and greatest stable version now available. And it may not be available in this one quite yet. Might be a security update in the future. Other than that, like I said before, we do have LibreOffice pre-installed by default. If I were to come into my More Apps, go to Installed, there we go. These are all the apps that came pre-installed. LibreOffice, the whole suite, it is version 3.3.2. Uh, loads and loads of applications pre-installed. Uh, so do feel free to take a look at those if you're interested. You can probably pause the video and just very quickly look at those. I'm not going to bother reading them all off to you because that will get old very, very quickly. If you want to install new apps though, where do you go? Left hand side here we have the Ubuntu Software Center. There have been some significant changes made to this, or at least some changes made to it, since 10.10. .10. If you come in here by default, you see that we've got, when it decides to load up, uh, that's not the default because I've already opened it. Here we go. We've got different categories. We've got featured applications and what's new. Now you'll notice this is something slightly different. We have stars on all of the applications. If the app has been rated or reviewed, and that's the new thing here, you can come in and take a look to see what people think of the app. So for example, Archive Manager. Hopefully somebody's reviewed it. No, nobody's reviewed that one. Okay, let's go into games. Games, people always love games. Arcade games and Alien Arena. If you look in there, look, we've got some reviews that showed up and then disappeared. All right, great game, not as good as promised. Sorry that person didn't care for the game, but it does show you four stars. It shows you their opinion of it, whether they thought it was helpful or not. And you can even flag it as inappropriate. If someone were to post something that was spam or that was just hateful, you could definitely flag that. But that's probably enough for a quick first impressions of Ubuntu 11.04. If you'd like to see some more on the development process and some of the other new items that have been included in this, feel free to check out the other videos I've done on the alphas and the betas. I will have links to all of those, of course. If you have any questions about this or you notice something that I forgot to talk about, something that's big, important, anything like that, definitely let me know in the comment section below. I'm sure the other viewers would appreciate it. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. <laughs>